Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video, doing Jam A Friday for today's first video. So as was on a Friday, we're having your month ahead look ahead with Japanese and CFS B2 mods. It's going to take us into the middle of June. So uh, we're going into the summer of 2019 with, uh, with the month ahead look heads now. Uh, coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have your uh, regular week to 10 day video update. It's going to include all of the usual features, of course. So we're starting off with the uh, JMA um, forecast from the North Pole view down. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere uh, just here. I mean, black shoes, the Northern Hemisphere around there. Uh, yellow, orange and red will be extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure blue, to below average heights, which is low pressure uh, these are broken down into week periods. The first week period is going to take us from the 17th through to the 24th of uh, May. So the coming week will have a blocking area of high pressure sitting to the north of the country, uh, north of the UK, going up to Greenland and Iceland, and then back into the North Pole. Below average heights to our south, which leaves us pulling in uh, easterly winds and probably quite unsettled, particularly into southern parts of the country. Certainly showery, uh, showery bursts of rain coming up from the south on that sort of solution. Into week two, this takes us from the 24th through to the 31st of May, uh, with low pressure below average heights over and to the east of the country. Above average uh, heights, high pressure out to the west. Blocking signal is reducing a little bit, but nevertheless, it still looks rather cool, rather unsettled. You expect us to be pulling in north northwesterly winds with that, so it could be quite cool and quite unsettled as we go into the final week of May. And then into weeks three and four, this takes us from the 31st of May to the 14th of June. It all looks rather... Uh, rather strange, really. It's a job to glean much of the way of information uh, from that. Obviously, we have some low pressure over here around Newfoundland. Otherwise, you just have sort of near normal heights. When this happens, it tends to be that the model is bringing in a westerly flow, reverted kind of like a typical uh, zonal westerly type flow. But again, there's not really enough there to go on to be able to um, say what is happening in uh, weeks three and four. The chart looks very, very strange, very really bizarre uh, looking chart. So I don't think we'll dwell on that uh, for too long. Let's have a look at the tropical and mid latitude view in terms of um, temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies for the next four weeks. So uh, we can't see the North Pole. That's off the chart uh, up here somewhere. Richard's just here in the top right hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. Of course, we saw the North Pole view down, so we know roughly what's happening over the North Pole uh, in the next, uh, certainly in the next couple of weeks, and it will get a bit odd as we get, th get through to weeks three and four. Uh, so, um, the uh, 500 middle of our height only for this week, the 17th through to 24th of May, has an area of, uh, of high pressure blocking to our north up here with low pressure, below average heights to our south, pulling in sort of an Easty wind and probably quite unsettled before too. Temperature anomalies aren't too bad actually. So we're coming out for North Park coach coming out a bit milder than average. So England and Wales coming out close to average. You'll notice to our south it looks quite cool across um, Spain and Portugal, and also across many parts of Central Europe as well, looking quite cool. But for us actually a relatively mild week. Uh, coming up and not overly unsettled either so perhaps a little bit surprising based on the 500 millibar high dominant the model wants us to have kind of like a milder and drier and average week I'm not sure about that certainly temperatures could be reasonable I suppose but I think it could be a little bit more unsettled than that suggesting notice many parts of Europe are being forecast have quite a wet uh, quite a wet week um, in week one then we go through to week two with a below average height sitting to our east and the above average heights out to our west. That leaves us pulling in a west or northwesterly uh, type wind and it did look quite unsettled too. Temperature anomalies are a bit cooler in week two. This taking us from the 24th through to the 31st May, so the last week of May. A little bit cooler, actually a bit cooler than average for England and Wales. Not too far from average over northern parts of the country. Still relatively dry actually, despite that we've got below average heights sitting just just to our east, it's a relatively dry sort of week again with uh, the JMA. So uh, last week of May coming out drier than average there. And then we're through to weeks three and four. That very strange looking 
uh, chart. So again, can't really say what is going on there from a 500 millibar height anomaly perspective. Temperature anomalies are a little bit above average though, so no problems with temperatures. The moment is quite cool out in the Atlantic, but overall it's a bit milder than average there from the 31st of May to the 14th of June. And uh, precipitation anomalies are on the drier side too. So this is perhaps going for a relatively uh, warm and dry first couple of weeks um, to June. But again, because of the sort of strangeness of that 500 millibar height anomaly, I think there's got to be a lot of uncertainty about those first two weeks of June. Let's go through to the CFS V2, see what that's showing. So again, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into weekly pairs. The first weekly pair taking us from the 17th through to the 23rd of May. The uh, coming week has above average heights blocking, sitting to our north, northeast, below average heights to our south. We're pulling in an easterly wind, and it could be a bit showery, particularly for southern parts of the country. Then we go through to week two, this is the 24th through to the 30th of May. The CFSV2 places a big ridge of above average heights over top of the uh, country, actually, with below average heights in the Atlantic, sending the jet stream northwards a bit like that. So that's a warm and dry final week uh, to May. Plenty of warm and dry weather on offer there. Uh, week three is the 31st of May to the 6th of June, again with an area of above average heights, high pressure over top of the country, below average heights over northern Scandinavia, jet streams pushed northwards. That's another warm and dry week for the first week of June. And then we go through to week four, which is the 7th through to the 13th of June, with above average heights then over, and perhaps ever so slightly to our north, below average heights in the Atlantic, and also across the northeastern parts of Europe, flow and the jet is going something like that. That's pretty warm and dry into the second week of June as well. So if this is right, we're in for a very pro a prolonged and pronounced spell of warm, maybe quite hot, and dry weather. I have to say there's absolutely no sign of this, really, within the shorter range model output. So again, it's another one of those weeks where it's long range versus short range. You'll see the short range models uh, later on in today's second video update. It's another one of those weeks, I've had a few of these lately, where the long range model bears absolutely no resemblance to what the short range models are showing. So incredibly uncertain again, really, uh, but if this is right, if the short range is wrong, and the CFS has got this right, then we're in for a prolonged spell of hot and dry weather starting very, very soon. Temperature anomalies, we'll go through these very quickly, because look at this, temperature anomalies, week 1, 17th, 23rd of May, significantly warmer than average. Temperature anomalies for week 2. The 24th to the 30th of May, significantly warmer than average. Temperature anomalies for week 3, 31st of May to the 6th of June, significantly warmer than average. Heat wave conditions, week 4, 7th to the 13th of June, significantly warmer than average. That's real heat wave conditions, actually, in week 4. Look how high the anomaly is. It's kind of like 2 degrees over uh, above average. That's very hot start to June that the CFS is seeing there. And precipitation anomalies, well, with high pressure dominating, it's going to be dry all the way, I suppose. So week one, drier than average. Uh, week two, also drier than average, 24, 30th of May, much drier than average. Week three, the signal is weakening a little bit, but uh, coming out close to average. And then week four, you've guessed it, we're back to drier than average, especially for northern parts of the country from the 17th, from the 7th to the 13th of June. So... Uh, I mean, it's another one of those weeks. They've had a few of these lately where the long range ones, particularly the CFS, wants to get us going with the heat wave, wants to get us back really to the pattern we had last summer. That's what the CFS is doing. Wants to take us back to the pattern we had during summer 2018. So far, we've seen very little sign of it through this May. Um, at the moment, May's temperature coming out cooler than average, with the CF, which the CFS never at any point forecast. Um... And uh, there's very little sign of this sort of 
uh, change to hot and dry weather within the shorter range model output either. So I'm a bit dubious that what the CFS is doing here. But that's not to say it's wrong. It could be that shorter range output is wrong and this coolish or oh, cool first half to May that we've had is very quick going to be swept away by a resumption of hot and dry uh, conditions. Are we going to go back to the pattern we had last summer? That's what the CFS wants to do. I think the JMA is a little bit more um, sort of in betwixt, in between. The JMA could go either way, really, I think, especially when you get through to weeks three and four. It wants it to be largely on the drier and milder than an average side, but it isn't going anywhere near as far uh, with that as the CFS is. The CFS is really going to town today on very warm, hot, dry conditions setting up very, very shortly. If it's going to come off this broadcast, it's going to have to happen within the next few days, really. There have to be a big, big shift in the shorter range model output. It have to start very soon if this forecast from the CFS is right. So the CFS wants us to go to hot, dry conditions, certainly by the end of May, but, um, especially into the first couple of weeks of June. JMA is not going as far as that, but it, it could go in that direction. Alternatively, the JMA could probably go cooler and more unsettled. And, uh, of course, the short-range models are just uh, uh, are just in a different um, universe, really, compared to what these long-range models are showing. So it's another really confused week, and we'll just have to see how it plays out over the uh, next few days. I'll be back later on this afternoon with your week's 10 daily updates, and we'll be going through those short-range uh, models, and you'll see what they've got to say um, later on uh, this afternoon. So... As ever with long range forecasting, all very experimental. These uh, long range charts are subject to chopping and changing. They're unreliable, so it could all look very different uh, next week. As I said, with that, they chop with the shorter range model output. But uh, yeah, if the service is right, then uh, get ready for a heat wave. Not sure about it, though. Right, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.